All right, in this video, I want to show you guys how to think about coloring comics because a lot of the legwork, a lot of the heavy lifting can be done before you even really put a color on the page. So let's get started. Hey there, my name is K. Michael Russell. I'm a comic book colorist. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, so like I said in the intro, in this video, I want to show you guys what my thought process is before I start putting colors on the page. I had someone recently ask about that, and they were really sort of frozen about how to get started and so let's just get right into this. These are the first five pages of uh, Hack Slash Resurrection number eight. Yeah, eight. And this video is going to be a, a mix of time lapse and narration because I'm actually on a pretty tight deadline on this book and so I, I wish I could narrate the entire process but I'll kind of split it up. We'll do some yammering and then I'll do some coloring and we'll keep going back and forth. Um, so to start with the first thing you want to think about are your planes, okay? Now, I don't mean airplanes. I mean foreground and background, basically. I, I've got a, a, a rough uh, estimate of this here. This isn't exact, but I have my flatter go in and create these layers, which are basically just separating the characters on the page from the backgrounds. Uh, it makes it easy to select them, uh, especially when I'm rendering in Procreate. I use that a lot. So in each panel, I want to look at it and go, you know, what's important here? In some panels, it's really, really simple. In others, you've got some, some thinking to do here. But, for example, on this one, we've got Cassie and Vlad here. Obviously, they're the focal point of that panel. Nothing really uh, crazy to think about here, but if, you know, I want to minimize the background and make sure they're pulled forward. So when I start rendering this and start laying in my colors, you know, I'm going to keep that in mind. Now, uh, these are just the colors that came from my flatter. They really haven't been changed yet. So... You, you might see some weird stuff here and there, but they're they're pretty close. Uh, second panel, again, uh, just a single shot, so it's not a lot of uh, trickery necessary to uh, to draw attention here. And of course, I'm also uh, reading the script ahead of time, so I'm looking at each page and looking at the script and seeing, you know, is there something that's not obvious in the art that I want to make sure and, and bring out? But like for example, in this panel with Cassie and these two guys up front, you know. These guys aren't that important. They're just some patrons in this restaurant. So I'm going to think about, let me get something to draw with here. So I'm going to think about, you know, what can I do to sort of minimize these two guys? And so we can look past these guys and see where the action is. So, you know, I'm going to probably put kind of a shadowy color over these guys because, you know, darker colors and cooler colors tend to recede and they don't tend to draw a lot of attention. So that's why you see this a lot in comics when there's something that I want you to look past. A lot of times you'll see that it's cooler and darker than the rest of the panel. Uh, there are exceptions to that, but it's a pretty general good rule of thumb, I would say. Uh, the rest of these panels are fairly straightforward. Um, yeah, nothing really too exciting to think about there. All right, and I just realized these are not in order, which is fine, but uh, so this uh, this uh, next panel here on uh, on this page is just kind of a general scene. You know, there's no single character that's important. You, you kind of want to just kind of take the whole thing in. Now, um, I would still probably do some things to make sure that not all of these characters end up appearing like they're on the same plane. And, and you know, again, when I say plane, I mean like plane, like vertical plane. So I would probably do these guys, again, a little bit darker, maybe even this girl he's talking to, to sort of frame, you know, the rest of the action back here. And then I'm going to, you know, push all this stuff even further back. You know, so the whole time I'm thinking in terms of how do I create depth, how do I create atmosphere, you know, before really even thinking about light and shadow. So I might do some color holds on this stuff way in the back to show that, you know, it's there's some atmosphere, you know, in between. And as, and as you go back into the atmosphere, things get lighter and less contrasty. So I'm going to keep that in mind. And this panel, you know, it's kind of a big panel, but the action in the panel that I want you to look at is pretty small. It's right here. Again, I'm probably going to do something to create some contrast here. Okay, so I'm probably going to either do some kind of a simple wash over all of this stuff back here uh, to create less contrast again whereas people up front I'm gonna do is a little bit brighter lighting or create more contrast because I want you to look here you know 
And so we'll wander around, you know, your eye will wander around the panel, but it should immediately come to the two characters right here. I don't want you to read this and then have to try to figure out like where to go next. You know what I mean? That's really the whole point of being a comic book colors. Um, again, I've got two really obvious planes here where I've got them on the sides. So again, I'm not going to do a lot of crazy rendering on this shirt over here because it's drawing attention to something that's just not that important in the scene. You know, what is, is this guy. I don't know who he is yet. I guess we'll find out soon. Same thing on this page. I've, I've really got two levels of things happening. I've got the action, whoops, I've got the action here in the foreground. Make a new layer. I've got the action here. Looks like it's a, is it a blood drive? I haven't read this page of the script yet. But, uh, you know, this is what I want you to focus on. So this page is a good example, or this panel is a good example of the sort of uh, power that a colorist has. Because I could really easily, if I looked at this script and I see that, you know, Vlad is talking and he's the centerpiece of this panel, then I might do the same thing I've been doing these other pages and sort of minimize the characters in the front, right? Um, but in this scene, I'm, I'm fairly certain they're talking, and so I'm not going to do anything too nuts to make Vlad draw attention, you know. So there's not going to be a ton of contrast on Vlad back here, but, uh, you know, there will be more on Cassie and uh, this gentleman here, who I don't know. Same thing here, pretty simple panel. And I want to bring something else up while we're at it. With panels where the backgrounds are simple like this, you generally shouldn't look at that as an invitation to go crazy, okay? I, I've seen a lot of colorists, beginner colorists, you know, let's say it's a sky, you know, and all of a sudden they start painting in, in these really detailed clouds and all this stuff's going on, and your eye just wants to go to the clouds, you know, because there's so much contrast and they grab so much attention. You know, background is background okay it's background for a reason it's not that important so you know you don't want to do anything too nutty in the background generally speaking anyway uh, this panel again some pretty obvious planes and and sea lore has actually the artist on this has actually kind of taken care of a lot of the legwork for us by having this big spot black shadow up here so again it makes it really easy for us to uh, create some separation between those those two areas all right, and with this page, or this panel, she's ordering food at a drive through Again, nothing too crazy. I'm going to make sure that this whole, whoops, I'm going to make sure that this whole little area, you know, the car, Cassie, the taco hell uh, ordering device, and this menu, this is all, you know, this is all sort of on this plane together, okay? So I'm going to, you know, that's going to be your forefront, but I'm going to minimize these buildings back here, okay? I'm going to less contrast. They're going to kind of fade into the background. I might do some color holds on these um, to push them even further back. But, you know, I, I wouldn't want to do like a bright gold color on this building or, or some crazy saturated color back here because, again, it's going to draw attention to itself, and it's supposed to be background. So always keep that in mind. All right, gratuitous butt shot of, of uh, uh, Cassie in this scene. And they're, it's a self-referencing joke, self-aware. So, again, she's talking. You can kind of, you could probably go a couple of different ways here. Um, the joke, of course, is the fact that she's sticking her rear up in the air and Vlad is not interested uh, in seeing that. So, I will probably... Um, you know, make his reaction sort of the focus of this panel and do a little bit more rendering on him. But, you know, we're going to be seeing both. So this is one where, you know, there's not really an obvious thing we want to minimize here. The joke involves both. So uh, again, here, they're pretty close to each other. There's not a lot of distance. Um, depends on who's talking in the panel. If they're both talking, then I probably won't do a, a, a huge separation change between these two. But, uh, and the fact that he's a completely different skin tone helps. If he had regular skin colors, uh, then, you know, I might do him a little darker or her a little brighter or something to help separate that. And pretty straightforward panels here at the end. Nothing too crazy. we got a big outdoor shot, so again, I can go lighter back here as we go into the background. 
All right, and with this scene, it's just kind of an establishing shot. There's really nothing here specifically that we're going to be drawing attention to, so we'll just color that pretty regularly. There's there's no not a lot of storytelling going on there from a color standpoint. Um, same thing here. You know, they're pretty close together. I'm not going to go crazy there or there. Now this is a panel where the background is sort of a character, okay? The background is the focus of this. So this would be a good example of one of those exceptions that I was talking about. Um, the foreground, you know, Cassie and Vlad are are not the centerpiece here. It's sort of the lunacy of kids screaming and people arguing and waitresses smoking, which I think is funny. Uh, there's a guy passed out back here. The point of this is, you know, look at how insane this room is, you know. So I'm going to color this, you know, in all pretty much local colors and uh, and make sure I've got, you know, some highlights on the characters so that they stand out. But I'm going to minimize these two characters, though. That's where we're going to start. So I'm going to start kind of changing these base colors, and you guys are going to see uh, a lot of those things that I talk about happen. And uh, we'll pick this up when I find something else to talk about. quick note here um, if you ever have something that you want to draw a little bit of attention or if you are trying to decide on the color of something don't ever make that object the only thing that color in the panel unless you want it to draw attention so like right now you know the red tail on this uh, taco hell thing um, you know is, is actually grabbing some attention and I kind of want it to because I think it's a funny joke um, but if I wanted to minimize that, you know, I would mix it in with some of this other stuff. But if you've got something that's the only color, you know, that's the only red color in that panel, it's going to really draw a lot of attention to itself. So keep that in mind. But you see how before I ever started rendering on this page, I've already got a lot of depth now in this panel that wasn't there before just by changing the color of those lines. So I've actually, you know, done myself a favor here and it's less rendering work I've got to do if I set that up in the lines themselves. So moving on. And since I'm going to be doing most of the rendering in Procreate, which I'll show you guys the time lapse for that, the uh, most of what I'm doing now is going to be more background type rendering. So it's going to be simple. I'm just going to leave the backgrounds rendered before I move on to the next page. I'm going to bring up another point here. Always make your background rendering matter okay so like I could have just as easily put the kind of light fading up here but that brightness draws contrast 
you know, draws your eye up. So if I need contrast around Cassie, you know, I can just kind of subtly make you look over here by making sure that area is the brightest part of the background because her hair is so dark. So even your gradients in the background matter. You know, they shouldn't just be random. They should actually have a point. I mean, your renderings could always have a point, but you know what I mean. Alright, so what I did just there, because it's going to go by really fast on the, uh, on the time lapse, I put a layer in color mode uh, on top of everything, pretty much, on top of the colors, between, uh, under the lines, obviously. And I, I made it pretty much the color of the sky. It's just a solid color layer um, in, uh, in that blue color. And it's in color mode, and I set the opacity all the way down to like 9%. And what that does is it takes a little bit of that... If I toggle it off and on, and look at her skin, and you see that very, very subtle shift from that orange to blue, uh, or bluer. Uh, what it does, is because the sky is blue, you know, it's coloring everything, but it's still daytime and the sunlight's pretty white, you know, so it's not going to be like a really strong, you know, blue effect everywhere. That wouldn't make sense. Um, but just uh, just enough to take some of that really the warmest colors, you know, to kind of tamp them down a little bit. And so, yeah, and it also kind of ties everything together a little bit better. And in this panel, it's all about the food. So, you know, I figured I would uh, make those really stand out. It's not all about the food. You know what I mean? I want you to notice the food, even though it's not that important to the story. And I like the idea of the logo on this place to be like really red. Since this is Taco Hell, the script for this, the names on this food, it's really, really funny. Um, I'm not gonna give it away here, but Teeny the writer is cracking me up in this book pretty often. <laughs> I don't know, the green kind of works because the green and the yellow and the red. Yeah, I think I'm cool with that. Maybe a little bit more saturated. Another thing you guys will probably see me do a couple of times is I'll put all of the layers that are uh, above the base colors in one folder sometimes because I can very quickly turn off the whole folder and get to the base colors underneath. So like I wanna grab the color of the truck, I can just do that and then uh, you know, bring it over to this page. I, I never addressed how I'm changing these colors. I'm basically uh, just picking the color that I want or picking the area of the color that I want to change So for example, I'll grab Let's see. I'll grab the floor in here With the magic wand hide the selection got a shortcut for that and then right next to it is Control H which opens up hue saturation or I've got it set to open up hue saturation So then I can immediately, you know make those changes without having to go to the color picker and pick a color and all that stuff. It's a little bit faster. So what I'm doing here is I've just put a new solid color layer on top filled it with that uh, blue and just lowered the opacity just a little bit. 
down to like 70% or so. And then everything else on this scene will be warmer. For the outdoor scenes though, I'm actually going to go, I'm basically going to get the same color that I picked before for that kind of general background color, just kind of like that blue. And I'm going to fill these three panels at the top minus the inside of that restaurant with that same color in color mode, same opacity, like what did I say, 9%, 9, 10, probably doesn't matter. It's going to help tie what's happening here with what's happening in the previous scene since it's just daytime outdoors. Even though we're in a different location, it doesn't really matter that much for this part. But it does matter when I go inside this building. I want that to be obviously a different color. This place is pretty grimy, so I'm going with this kind of sickly green color here. And I'm just going to start pushing back areas that are not important. I'm going to make them darker so they're not drawing as much attention to themselves. Darker and less contrast in the rendering overall. And by doing all this background darker, it's helping to pull the characters forward. Now in this corner here, there's a lot of different colors right now, but it's kind of distracting. There's nothing important, you know, to the scene really there that should draw your attention. Uh, I did this with the buildings in the first, uh, in the first page here. Did the same thing I'm about to do here. So I'm going to select like all these little people back here that really aren't that important, and just make sure I just have them selected. Make sure I haven't selected anything else. And I'm basically going to use kind of the overall sickly color on a new layer. And then just sort of lower the opacity of that just a little bit. And this is in normal mode, so it really keeps that color. And now they all sort of, I can see this waitress a little bit better now. There's not as much competition around her, you know. She's interesting looking, so make her stick out a little bit. More than these patrons back here anyway. And I can just merge that layer back down. I'm not merging the these color adjustments because if it turns out that I want to go back and completely overhaul the colors later, I can do that because they're on separate layers. This guy has the same color shirt as the guy in the back, so I kind of want to shift that up some. But there's no you know one character in this scene that uh, is that important, so. Not gonna have anybody standing out too much, at least in this panel. Even subtle things like the inside of this truck, you know, I can sort of uh, kind of homogenize this a little bit. And if I make it cooler because she's mostly warm, she's going to stand out even more. So even in little things like that, I might be overthinking it, but it definitely doesn't hurt anything. But see the difference in how she stands out with that versus that? It's very subtle, but it works. I love the fact that she is not in her practical outfit right now, and it doesn't even matter. <laughs> getting to design Taco Hell's color schemes for their uh, beverages. Because it's a joke, like I'm kind of, I'm drawing more attention to that cup than probably I normally would, but someone's gonna look at that and go, that's a funny cup, or like it's cause it's got fire on it and it's Taco Hell. Let's see, I don't like the outside color of this building. Yeah, sometimes I just try stuff. <laughs> Maybe it's the inside of the windows I don't like. Yeah, that makes more sense now. Since I've got the inside is this grimy green anyway. You'll notice I zoom out a lot, you know, because I, I want to make sure this reads even at a distance. And again, most of this stuff is all kind of in the same value and saturation range, but when I start rendering, like, I'll bump some of this stuff up. And, uh, you know, and when I get to the lighting, I think these waitresses should probably stand out a little bit more. But you see how by making them like the only red thing in the panel, how 
you know, they sort of, that, those aprons kind of stand out a bit more. Yeah, it's a lot of push and pull. Like I, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, you know, this page needed somewhat of a better focal point, so I make the door red. But since I made the door red, I think the color's too close to the door on the car. So I'm going to shift it away from that red because I want you to think about the. Uh, I want you to notice the door first. By making this a different color, that truck is now the only gray thing on the page, so it comes together a little bit better, I think. Stuff like this is... Coloring's not what people think it is <laughs> most of the time. It's like, oh, just stay in the lines, dude. It's easy. Right, go ahead. See how that works out for you. Every now and then I'll, I'll get, uh, you know an artist or a writer or someone that it's like, yeah, I don't, I don't I'm having a hard time finding a color, so I'm just going to do it myself. And then they get in there and they go, oh, wait, this is not what I thought it was. <laughs> All right, so I think that page has come together pretty well. All right, so we're in the same place here. I'm just going to look at both the side by side since this whole thing happens. We're talking about the same stuff here. So it makes it a little bit easier to pick colors and alright. So first off, let's we're gonna use the same ugly green in all of this. Did they walk outside in panel one, two, three, four? This is why you have to have script. Sometimes it's not obvious. Cassie pushing the diner door out, leaving. Yup. So, we're not going to do all of these in that color. We're just going to do these first three. And it's about 50% opacity. And it's in color mode. Color mode. There we go. Now, you notice how they sort of got lost a little bit when I when I filled that in with that green color. So here's a trick that I've been doing on this in this book a lot is make sure that only they are selected. I don't want the cook selected. I just want them selected. And I'm doing that with that foreground layer that I that I that I have I don't want these guys selected. So they are now the only thing selected in those. Let's drag this over. They're the only thing now selected in those three pages, in those three panels. And let's see, I want to save this selection real quick. So I just. I'm going to fill the layer on top with that color just, just to save the selection. And I'm going to put a mask on this green layer. So now I've, I've got a mask on that green fill layer. Now I can select the selection that I just, you know, made. Now I don't need that layer anymore. And on the mask, I'm going to paint with a light light uh, gray here or just black at a low opacity and what you're gonna see is they're gonna start pulling forward a little bit because that greens not in there as much there's a little bit in there but not much that's what I just painted I'm trying to find the right combo here <laughs> how do you turn a mask off and on there we go shift shift click on a mask See the difference? I'm toggling it. Her skin tones especially. So there's still a little bit of that green in there, but not enough to completely... They still feel like they're in, you know, in the scene. 
She is not wearing capri pants. So the first three pages, first three panels, I'm pretty good with these, except for these guys. Let's see, we, want, we don't want them on the same plane as she is. Now I'm not selecting the guy behind her, because he's on a different plane, he's behind her. But these guys in front, I'm not going to select that smoke, I think that would look weird. So the same trick I did on the last page, I'm just going to pick a color. Whoops. Let's make sure I'm only getting this panel. Uh, oh, that's another thing that I'm doing quite a bit. You see what happened there? When I selected this guy's skin tone, it also grabbed the cook's skin tone because the flatter used the same skin tone. And my flatter is more of a coloring assistant these days because I did send her some reference colors for some of this stuff. But I don't want these things to change okay in panel one so I go to my panels layer which is just each panel separated and with magic wand selected and with intersect selected up here in the top left it says intersect with selection I pretty much leave that selected all the time now but when I click on panel three you're gonna see it deselects panel one because it's it's basically um, whoops get on the panels layer and now the only thing selected are these guys. So the cook's not selected anymore. That's what I use that panels layer. Or yeah, panels layer for. And I can play with the saturation on this little thing here. But now we've got some depth there, right? You can get even more depth by selecting this background behind her. Again, grab the panel selection only and then darken this a little bit. She'll stand out a little bit more. I want that same kind of green color behind her because she's leaving. So um, I can just go get that green color, put it in there behind her. So now it looks like she's leaving the room. Now they're outside again. So I can select all of the foreground in this panel, panel 4, select all of panel 5 and 6 and 7, and then deselect everything in panel 1, 2, and 3. I know this is going really fast, back it up and watch it again if you didn't catch all that. But basically I am just selecting the contents of outside. Okay. And you guessed it, I'm going to go get that same blue color again from page one and fill it, where was I? Oh, page three. I got my pages out of order here. And again, very low opacity in color mode, 9, 10%, something like that. I said I wasn't going to talk this much, but that was a lot to explain. <laughs> I just want to make it obvious that they're outside, so I'm going to shift the color of these bricks. All right, so we had a big scene change. So you'll see the color scheme uh, change a little bit here. And we're in like a Ren Fair, so you know, I'm thinking about a lot of you know very natural colors and kind of like creamy, woodsy type colors. Because that's the stuff that kind of gets associated with with these things. Nothing that looks incredibly artificial. But even within the panel, like, you know, obviously these people aren't that important as far as, like, I don't draw tons of attention, but they will be clearer in the panel 
if all these little people behind them are not quite as, uh, not on the same level as they are color wise. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before where I kind of select all of the background around them and actually all of these people back here. I'm hitting Q for quick mask just to see what I've selected. I don't really use quick mask for anything but that. <laughs> so again, just kind of overall environment color here, which is kind of like this brownish color probably. On a new layer, fill it. Actually, this guy is kind of interesting looking. So the guy with the big hat on the left. So I'm going to take him out of this. And then just tone the opacity down a little bit and maybe shift the color around a little bit. But again, they're kind of got that creamy thing going on. So they're blending in the background a little bit more than the people up front. So I'm trying to simplify the shapes because there's there's so much going on that uh, you know I don't I don't want I don't want the eye to have to just fly around all over the place. So these trees that are way back here, I'm gonna color hold these dudes. And if you're looking for something more step by step, of course, this video is not really, does you know, it's not the purpose of this video. But uh, be sure to check the links in the description for my, uh, I've got some step by step, really comprehensive coloring courses. So check those out. But you see how at this stage, we rather haven't even talked about rendering. We haven't talked about light and shadow. Like we're talking about big shapes and planes and that's where you start. Because everything else is so cool, color-wise, in this uh, scene, I'm basically uh, flip-flopping what I did on the last page and uh, doing the foreground warmer. But now i got to change the outfit on the guy in the weird hat <laughs> so that he blends a little bit better. But you see how now we've kind of got things simplified to reddish-orange in the front, cools in the middle, you know, color holds way back there where those trees are. That's how you can get some depth in here. Actually, I just realized this guy in the pointy hat is fighting this guy. So let's, let's fix that. I'm going to color these guys pretty similarly here. Guy in the purple shirt's distracting me now. <laughs> Just toned it down some. All right, we're gonna do exactly what I mentioned earlier. I'm gonna take out some of these crazy colors, simplify the background.
All right, so we're coming to the end of the rendering and setup in Photoshop, and now these are Procreate uh, time lapses. So I'm actually trying a little something different with the rendering that I've done previously. So basically, doing all the shadows on a layer and multiply. I'm doing all of the primary light source uh, in uh, add mode and procreate. Uh, and then in all the shadows, there's sort of a reflected, that blue light you're seeing on Vlad, for example, that sort of uh, blue light on, in all the areas where the shadows, um, you know, are, are reflecting light from the environment, basically. So if you think about it, there's really only three colors used in the rendering on Now, I did go back over the top with uh, just a little bit of, um, just I don't know what you would call it, just sort of little rim lights and highlights and places where I wanted a little bit more focus. And uh, so, yeah, you, you might notice that on some of these. But uh, once this finishes up, I'll jump into Procreate and show you guys what I'm talking about. But uh, unfortunately, with my shoulder the way it is right now, I just can sit at my desk and continue to, to record. So this was done over several sessions uh, from my recliner in Procreate on the iPad. So, But you'll see that same sort of uh, process on each one of these. You'll see that blue shadow come in. Uh, you'll see the brighter kind of yellowish white uh, highlight go on everything. And then after that, you'll see that... Uh, that light uh, kind of environmental color that pops into all the shadows. But I was really happy with how these pages turned out. These are some of my favorite pages, I think. Uh, Celor, the artist on this, really stepped it up in this issue. We had a little bit of a break, and 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 I don't know uh, if I, I don't know if he just took his Wheaties or his steroids or <laughs> performance enhancement drugs whatever it was but these pages came in just looking really amazing with uh he he, he had sort of a kind of a, almost like an abstract style i don't really know the term for it to be honest but he had this sort of uh, very rough style which is which was fine it wasn't a problem at all and but for this issue he really uh, made the forms a lot more solid and less cartoony and so what i was doing before which was a lot flatter than this, actually didn't work as well to me anymore. So that's why I was trying to kind of step it up and and, and keep up with him, basically. But uh, but it's been interesting seeing uh, his progression over the last seven issues and and going into this uh, this arc. And it, it kind of makes sense to have... It's a good time to, to have the art change a little bit because we just wrapped up the first arc. We're going into a second... So, uh, so yeah, it's a little bit uh, different, and but I tried to keep the palettes the same uh, for the most part. There's a little bit more, there's more colors involved as far as overall, but but uh, I think that, you know with the palette staying the same, I honestly don't think most people will even notice. And uh, you guys will see this uh, after the book comes out or after they release some preview pages. I'm recording this. It's May fourth. May the fourth be with you, by the way of 2018 and uh, so yeah I'm not sure it's gonna be a couple of months for you guys can see this so yeah we, we shifted into I didn't really get a chance to show you guys this page before but uh, we shifted into a tent where it was a lot uh, you know there wasn't sunlight so I kind of put everything in this cool sort of blue watch over everything so that uh, help separate us from the previous scene in the sun. But you can see the sun shining through that uh, the, the tent opening there in the first panel. All right, so of course it's tough to tell exactly what's going on in a time lapse. So I thought I would show you guys in Procreate what was actually happening here. So. This is basically just where I left it when I left um, Photoshop the first time. So there is all the shadows. So they're all in one layer, that kind of bluish layer and multiply. There's the highlights, which are all these bright yellowy colors you're seeing here that look sunny. Uh, that layer is in add mode. 
at around 55% if you care. And then this cool light, which is a little bit harder to see, but if you look on like Cassie in the shadows there, uh, you'll see that kind of blue light bouncing off and on there. And the reason I chose blue is because the sky is blue. And so any light that's not direct from the sun is going to be indirect from the overall color of the environment. And in this case, big blue sky, so that's where we ended up. Uh, now there were a few other layers on top of this. There was a layer just in normal mode here that had just some little rim lights and things like that that I just knew what I wanted to do with those. And so they're just kind of little white and light blue and then on top of that there was an overlay layer which is where I got this sort of orangey glow over everything you guys can see they're just big soft brush you know nothing too fancy there uh, I always get asked about brushes um, brush you use doesn't really matter that much but I'll tell you that all of these were default brushes um, the majority of the rendering was done on a flat marker is what it's called in Procreate and then there were a few little highlights like these little uh, white rim lights you're seeing that were actually done with the pencil. Um, I've, I've found that I like finishing off pages with that pencil because it, it's, it's a little bit sharper but it's got some good texture to it and I was just really happy with how these pages turned out. So after that we go back into Photoshop which there we go. And the only thing that I did in Photoshop after the fact, there was a slight curves adjustment, which uh, looks kind of like this. It's pretty flat, but I, I pulled down the left side just a little bit because that's where the, uh, the shadows are. So I want to darken those. And then the bright parts pulled that up on the right upper, uh, upper right corner. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it's pretty subtle curve, but you can see it makes a pretty big, uh, pretty big difference there overall. So just add a little bit of contrast. Uh, be careful with it because you still don't want your dark areas to get too dark when they're printing. It's very easy to adjust yourself into a sort of non-printable range of colors. So, so anyway, it has been a lot of work <laughs> putting this video together. So I hope you guys have enjoyed it, and uh, it really. Uh, I hope you've learned something. There's a lot of planning that goes into pages, and some of it all can happen in your head over the course of a minute or two, you know. But I notice that a lot of beginners just think, let me start throwing some lights and shadows around and see what happens. And if you think about this stuff ahead of time and really focus on, you know, what do I want to show up? What am I trying to accomplish? You're not just throwing random colors around. It makes a pretty huge difference. Uh, if you guys want a more comprehensive step-by-step -step, you know, tutorial on this sort of stuff, be sure to check out the links in the description for my coloring courses and painting courses and all sorts of things down there. And subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of this stuff. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.